Microphones for broadcast production undergo a large amount of stress during their working life. They're packed in and out of bags, tugged, pulled, and in some cases exposed to extreme conditions in the name of capturing the perfect take. Indeed, and whatever production you're working on, you need a reliable microphone system that can take whatever you might throw its way. When the red light's on, it's got to work. Yeah, building on the success of their Twinplex lav and headset range, Shure is expanding further into the sub-miniature market with their new IP57 rated Duraplex microphones. And today we're chatting to Shure product manager Stuart Stevens to explain the technology behind Duraplex. Hi Stuart, welcome to the show once again. It's good to have you back with us. So Yeah, thank you for having me back. Should we start with a quick overview of the Duraplex range? What's new? So the Duraplex range is uh, just that we have a range of Lavalier microphones as well as a headset option um, in various colors and connector types. So uh, the standard color options are you know, black, tan, cocoa and white for Lavaliers. And then we have um, black, tan and cocoa for headset choices. Again, bringing it down to a, a lower price point as well beneath Twinplex. Uh, so what 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 differentiates that? I mean, they I think Duraplex and Twinplex, they're the same cable design. What's 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 the difference though? So yeah, you've kind of the, the Plex bit gives it away in that they both share this, what we're calling the Plex technology cable. Um, what's a bit more different about mm. Duraplex is Twinplex itself was designed to kind of be the high tier theater environment, your West End productions. So that itself is a very kind of extremely kind of reliable cable it's got a hydrophobic coating on the capsule it will handle kind of sweat and makeup and stuff that you'll encounter in the the theater world mm. but with yeah. duraplex Lovely. shockingly we wanted something that was a bit more durable and could handle more extreme environments so oh. one of the things is we looked at the actual element design so twinplex features a dual diaphragm condenser element uh, duraplex features a mems based element and part of the reason we chose that is uh, our experience showed that the MEMS element gave us great performance in kind of extreme temperature environments, high temperatures, high humidity. It was just very consistent in terms of how to adapt to those changes. Um, and then just from a manufacturing point of view, make with Twinplex, the, the manufacturing side of things, uh, a lot of effort and work went into being able to make a dual diaphragmed condenser in what is a, a sub miniature size or form factor. Um, with Duraplex, okay. we knew we wanted to bring down the price point and make it a more affordable offering. And part of that is looking at different ways we could redesign that capsule to kind of take away some of that manufacturing challenges that we have with Twinplex. So the Duraplex is a, a very small form factor. I think you describe it as a sub miniature. What's the what's the actual definition of a, a sub-miniature microphone? So there's no kind of concrete definition, but generally um, across Shaw and uh, a lot of the other manufacturers of Lavalier microphones and headsets, um, anything really below like a five or six millimeter size um, is can be considered sub-miniature. So Shaw as a company have offered sub-miniature Lavalier's in the past with products like the, the MX150 range, um, the WL93 would be considered a sub-miniature Lavalier. Um, and then Twinplex falls within that kind of below five millimeter size. Um, so that's yeah. that's really where the, the sub-miniature name comes from. Yeah, fair enough. And I don't know whether you covered this in your thing, but we've said, okay, there's a difference between Duraplex and Twinplex, but the cable design is the same. Do, will, can you use the same cables in, uh, between systems yeah so the the, the plex cable yeah. is identical yeah. between the two um yeah. and one of the reasons is like i said we wanted duraplex to be kind of very good in those extreme environments where you cannot afford to have lav mics fail you're going to be getting them wet they're going to be yeah. in kind of dusty humid environments like if, if you consider some of the the kind of productions that happen like your your nature documentaries those kind of productions you don't know, you might be going from one week in a humid rainforest at 99% humidity, and then the next week you're in the Sahara yeah. doing shoots there where you're facing dust and other sort of environments. Um, so there was the capsule design, but also the cable, uh, it features what the dual redundant ground. So when we researched Twinplex, we discovered that a common cause of right. failure amongst the valleys is break in the shield. 
um, with the plex cable, that dual redundancy yeah. just means that if you break that shield, you still maintain your ground continuity and therefore your resistance to kind of GSM interference. Um, and it can also take the abuse of like when you're packing up at the end of the day, you just want to get stuff away quickly. So people might just wrap them around body packs, kind of just they, they'll get stretched as they're getting pulled through yeah. theater outfits yeah. and costumes, those sorts of things. Um, and a big part of the Plex cable is being able to withstand that abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm sure. I'm sure none of us are guilty of uh, just wrapping a, a microphone cable around our hand there and packing it away. <laughs> no, no, not. that that comment no. certainly wasn't based on anything I've seen <laughs> that in the field at all. <laughs> so I guess a big use of these mics, due to their size and toughness, are going to be theatres where they they need to blend in with the costume design as well. Yeah, and uh, again, with Twinplex, that was a, a big point of it. We actually spent, I believe it was just over five years researching different cable types for Twinplex because um, on top of making sure that the actual internal cable structure um, was solid enough to withstand the abuse, as I said, of wrapping it around or being pulled through a costume when it's the actual transmitters mounted in, mm. we also wanted to make sure that the outer jacket was able to cope with both industry standard kind of paint, makeup, uh, chemicals that they put on there to color match a specific production, but also the cleaning uh, chemicals that are used to then wipe off that paint and makeup. So things like isopropyl alcohol, it's common to just wipe off the, the makeup on these lav mics. And we needed that outer jacket to be secure enough that it wouldn't dry out and crack. Uh, and then another benefit that we discovered while researching this cable is when somebody does wrap it around a body pack, you don't want those kinks and kind of yeah. different. Yeah, you know what I mean? The, the odd kinks you get in the cable to remain. Yeah, yeah the, the memory yeah. effect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. the benefit of the Plex cable is that when it is wrapped up and you, it has been kind of just tucked into a wig or hidden in a costume, the this, the lack of memory effect means that as long as you smooth that out a bit, it will return to a, a near enough straight and just yeah. allow you to really extend the life of those lab options okay yeah so we can be you know that that's an interesting thing there you said you said you said all that uh, uh you know um uh, all of the things that it's capable of its toughness and we can be sure that oh hang on there's, there's a pun there we can be sure that sure mics are going to be um um you know tough and durable but tell us a little bit about the testing process is you know if you've achieved achieved ip57 ratings on it how did you go about that yeah i just comment it is one of those funny things where it is tough to mention a product like duroplex without using the word durable <laughs> we've fallen into that trap before yeah um <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, as a platform like any other shore product it goes through our full range of standard shore quality tests so even if we weren't before we get on to achieving the ip rating um, it will go through our quality procedures in terms of humidity testing. Uh, it goes through extreme temperature changes where we will put it in a, a test chamber and drop it to minus 100 C and then rapidly bring it back up to um, like plus, well, temperatures in excess of 60 right. degrees C just, just to see what those quick changes, what impact they have on the components. And then if we did get a failure, we would go back and see what components can we replace or improve to just in, like basically ensure that they meet our quality standards. Mm. Above that, the the IP rating, the ingress protection rating, the 57, the first number, the five, is relates to solid particles. So that's how well protected the microphone is against uh, dust particles. Uh, and to achieve that, we actually have a dedicated IP5 test chamber. So we will take the labs, we will put them in this test chamber, and it will kind of just circulate dust continuously for eight hours. After that, we remove it. We just kind uh -huh. of blow on it, kind of get rid of some of the dust yeah. particles and then just simply do like a, a, a voice test. We speak into the mic, put it through and make sure it meets, still meets our performance specifications. Um, the second number, the seven, relates to the ability to being submerged in up to one meter of water for 30 minutes. So that is a simple test where we have a tank oh. of water with a mic connected to it, and we just simply drop the mic in there, set a timer for 30 minutes, and then come back and make sure that once we 
flick the water off from the outside of the the capsule does it still again meet our performance requirements for frequency response yeah. and so on um so yeah the, the submerging it in water was the easier yeah. of the two tests we didn't have to find a dedicated dust yeah. chamber yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's find a meter know. of water though yeah so what connection choices are these mics terminated with Stuart? so for the duraplex range we've just gone with the limo three pin connector and the four pin uh, mini TQG connector. These cover the vast majority of kind of wireless body pack systems that we see on the market. Um, for those customers that need a bit more flexibility or want the ability to terminate on other connectors, maybe like a, a Sony Hiroshi connector or another four pin or five pin connector option, um, we would always recommend moving up to Twinplex because that's where you do have the flexibility of a no connector variant to self terminate your lab options. Right, yeah. And what, um, so if, if, if I'm interested, I mean, maybe you, RRP, what sort of price point are we talking for each of them? So for the labs, there is a bit of a difference between the, the Limo and the TQG versions, just from complexity of the and cost of the Limo connectors. Yeah. So they're a little bit more expensive at about £295, uh, including VAT. And then the TQG version is £275. Ish. Um, okay. And, yeah. yeah. And, and then the headsets are about a hundred pounds more than that. Um, yeah. That's the one yeah. note that I forgot to bring was the headset price. Yeah. <laughs> and in terms of availability, we'll, sure, we'll are they shipping now? Yeah, these are shipping now. They're available. Um, contact your local Shore dealer for more information. I would say. Absolutely. I'm sure they'll find it at, uh, at the Shore website. That's brilliant. Look, thank you very oh, much yeah, for cool. coming in today and telling us all about it, Stuart. Well, thank yeah, you. thank you. And yeah, uh, so thank you yeah, for having me again. To, not at all, not at all. And thanks to Media Proxy for their support. Uh, you'll find out more about them at mediaproxy.com. And all of our shows are also now available on podcast. See you next time.